Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how we can take an existing code base in ASP.NET Core that isn't using Mediator and migrate it to use it. Now this video will focus on the how, not on the why. I do have a video already if you want to know why we're using Mediator in the first place and what's the benefit of using it, so I'm going to put it on the top right corner of the screen and the description down below. In this video we're just going to focus into the process of adding it into the system and explaining some things as we go and we're going to do that using more of a vertical slices mindset and also hint towards a CQRS approach. If you like all of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchampses.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple web API called Movies API, and this API, as the name implies, is used to store and retrieve movies. So if I just quickly run it, just to show you what we're going to be dealing with here, I have Postman with all my API requests. I can list a movie. I'm going to list the classic movie, Nick the Greek, that came out this year. And as you can see, a movie is created. I can take this ID of the movie and retrieve it using its ID. But this movie also has a slug, which is like a URL friendly version, which I can also use to retrieve that movie. Of course, if it is invalid, you're going to get a 404. I can list all the movies in the system. I can update a movie if I want to. Update only works with the ID, so I would have to copy that, paste it here, and I'm saying, oh no, actually, this movie came out last year. I also have validation, so if I try to update a movie into the future that is invalid, I'm getting an error. If I try to update a movie that doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error, and I can also just delete a movie and delete will return OK if it was deleted, not found if it wasn't found to be deleted. So let's see how this movie's API is actually implemented and see where we're going to start and how we're going to start migrating to Mediator. Now I should point out that this API is using SQLite because you might want to just grab the code from the description down below and use it so you can see all the objects and all the tables here. And let's take a look at what we have. So I have a contracts folder. This includes all of my API contracts that are eventually being converted into my domain model, which is that movies object. Then I have all my database related stuff in here and I have all my movies related stuff here. So the movie object itself is here. The movie repository is here. I'm using a repository pattern here to access SQLite. My controller is here. So all the control related things are here, service and then validator, focusing on a more vertical slice approach where my movies feature is isolated with all its concerns in here. And then I have some validation things, for example, this validation model. Now, the way flow works is you walk into the controller and then we push the thing into the service. The service will then call the repository and do some validation on top of that. And we're using Fluent Validator for that. And then eventually it's going to call into the repository. Now, for many people, the benefit of adding Mediator in this approach is that you can actually isolate each individual action and not have this master service object that has to know about everything. For example, why does the get endpoint, get by Slack or get by ID, or even the get all or delete, know about the existence of a validator in the first place because we inject that through the constructor. Well, it shouldn't because it's not using it, but that is one of the drawbacks of having everything in here in this tightly coupled way. And then we have to explicitly inject that movie service into the controller. What Mediator will allow us to do is actually separate each action into its own class with its own dependencies. And to start, what we need to do is actually add Mediator. Now, since Mediator 12, you no longer need to have an extra dependency injection NuGet package because everything has been consolidated into that Mediator package, so you don't need that. If you want to have dependency injection, now it is built in. And now that we have this in place, what we're planning to do is completely remove this movie service and have a handler per action where the controller accepts the requests and sends a request into an action. And by the way, if you're using minimal APIs, the same rule applies. You would have an endpoint that passes the request into a handler. So let's take a look how we can implement that. The first thing I'm going to implement is the create endpoint. And as you can see, what happens in create is we get the request and then we map it into a movie. We get the movie, we validate it. If it is invalid, we return a validation failed object, which is then being mapped to a response. But if it was valid, then we just create the object and return the movie to be shown into that 201 response body. So let's start with create. And I'm going to focus on that vertical slice approach where I'm just going to say that anything related to creating a movie will go here. So I'm going to create a create movie class. 
And that is it. Now, the classes I'm going to have in here are not going to be called create movie. Instead, I'm going to have a create movie command. A command indicates an action that mutates the system in some way. And again, focusing on that CQRS approach where we separate our queries from our commands. Queries are pure, they don't mutate any state. Commands will mutate the state. And now, what I'm actually going to do is utilize a record. So I don't need to have a class, I'm going to use a record, which again is still a class behind the scenes, but I'm going to have my parameters here in a compact way. So what I have is the title and the year of release, and that is it. And then this record needs to implement the I request interface of Mediator to indicate that this is a request that actually returns a specific type. In this case, the type is a result, which can be either a movie to indicate success or a validation failed to indicate failure. And that is it. Let me just new line this so you can see it even better. And that is how Mediator in its simple request response approach works. You have requests, you send them through the Mediator pipeline and you get a response back. You don't exactly know where it went. All you know is that you send a request that looks like this and it has a set response shape and you get that back and you process it. And by the way, this result I have here is a bit of a discriminated union on something that can be a success or a failure of some sort. So that's why I'm using that here. And now that I have the command, I need a handler for that command. So I'm going to create a public class, create movie handler. Here we go. Now this will need to implement the I request handler interface. And we're going to have the first parameter be the command itself and the second parameter be the response type. So this is a handler that accepts this specific command and returns this return type. And we're going to implement missing members and that's how that looks. So what does create need? It needs the movie repository and the movie validator. So I'm just going to go ahead and inject them here. First the repository and then the validator. So both things are injected from the constructor and I can now use them in handle. Now for handle, I'm just going to copy what I had in the service because remember, we are replacing what we had in the service now into this handler with mediator. And of course, Mediator is async only and async first as well. So we can have that here. But since we no longer have that movie that we had from the mapper, we can actually simply just create it here or move that into a mapper. We don't need to explicitly do this for every object. You can have your own mappers. In my case, I wrote the mappers myself because I don't like using something like auto mapper, but with bigger objects, you can use it. Just make sure you do not put any business logic in there. So now I have that in the exact same code. But now the great thing about this is that only the things I need are injected in here, nothing more, nothing less. And if I want to edit something, I only edit this class that is solely responsible for this action and nothing else. Now with create in place, let's do get. And the process is the same. But in this case, get movie will actually be a query because it is that pure form of a request that doesn't mutate any state. Again, a record, get movie, query, and I'm going to have an I request that returns a nullable movie because a movie can exist or it might not exist. And this query in this case has a single parameter called ID or slug because you can search something by ID or you can search it by slug. Same thing as before, we're going to have a get movie handler using those same parameters as before we're going to implement the missing members and we can only inject what we need in this handler. But the great thing about this is that I don't need that validator that I had in that service in this case. So I can only inject the repository, which is really what I care about. And by the way, if you're doing CQRS where you actually separate your repositories to your query based repository and your command based repository, then this will allow you to only inject what you really need in this handler. In terms of implementation, the process is the same. I turn this into async and then I have my check whether it's good or not. And then I return appropriately. And that is it. Now to wire these handlers up, because as you can see, nothing really explicitly uses them. All I need to do is go to program.cs and I can say builder.services.addMediator. And the way this works now is you have this configuration action and you can say register services from assembly containing a specific type. The type we want here is the program.cs, but it can be anything. In many cases, you might actually want to create a specific type to use as an assembly marker to mark an assembly. All this is really does is it lets Mediator know that, hey, if you see anything that is a handler or in some cases a pipeline or behavior, in this assembly, please register it. So now with that in place, I can now go into my controller and I'm going to remove this movie service completely and I'm going to comment out the get all 
and the delete, mainly because I just want to show you how simple now it is to inject the iMediator interface, initialize that from the constructor, and that's going to be registered as part of that addMediator call. And then all I need to do here is we no longer need to know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. All we need to say is that, okay, goodbye movie, goodbye this. And now what we need is a command we're going to send into Mediator to be handled by some handler responsible for that result. So I'm going to say command equals new create movie command with that title and year of release. And then we're going to take that command and we're going to send it over to Mediator. So I'll wait mediator.send and we're going to just say, take that command, give it back eventually, and we're going to process it. And now the difference in handling here is that I actually need that movie object to get the ID and the object to map it into the response body. So I just handle it here from that match method, which is part of that result method that I have over here, and then just map it into that response and return it to the user. And I'm going to do the same with get. I'm going to remove all that. The controller doesn't need to know anything. All it needs to have is that get movie query with that ideal slug, and then it's going to send that query over to mediator. So now we're in place, I'm going to go ahead and just run my API. Remember, only get by ideal slug and create works. So what I'm going to do is just go over here and I'm going to go ahead and create a new movie, Nick the Greek 2, the sequel which came out on the same year. So as you can see, the movie was created and what I'm going to do is add a breakpoint here to show you exactly what's happening. So I'm going to create the third movie as well, why not at this point? So the breakpoint is hit, we're getting that API contract over here that we map that into a command and then that command is sent into mediator. Now, here's one of the biggest problems with mediator. You cannot step into the send method because what happens behind the scenes is there's a dictionary that matches requests with handlers. So what you need to do if you want to debug it, which is a bit of a pain, is to know which handler is responsible for handling it, add a breakpoint here and then step over and that way you're going to land into the handler. That's one of the biggest criticism, but I can live with that. So we have the movie, we check the validation result, it should be valid, so it is valid, and then we go all the way into the database, we create it into the database in that SQLite, and then we return it back, and we show it to the user. And if I want to get it by ID, I can go here, and I have a query in place, so I can get it either by ID or by slug, and things like not found still work. Now, because everything else uses the same principles, so get all, update, and delete is just the same. I'm just going to do them off camera and add them into the system. Here you go. So get all is here, only injecting that repository. Update is here with the ID as well, which we are mapping from the controller. And then delete is here as well. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, oh, Nick, you just added so many new class files and so many things in here now to do the exact same thing you were doing before. Why did you do that? Well, you would be right if we were just to leave this as it is. If you just add mediator and that is your outcome and that is your finished product, then you didn't really gain much. Arguably, you lost something because now you have all these handles that are being instantiated per request, wasting more memory in your application. But mediator has some awesome mechanisms and features built in that will now allow you to completely supercharge your API and your ASP.NET Core project. And if you want to know more about them, please subscribe because I will be making a series about how we can take this exact code base to the next level. However, if all you wanted was a quick getting started guide with Mediator, that should be more than enough. You know how to create queries, you know how to create commands, you know how to send them over, and you know how to use them in a real API. But what do you think? Do you agree with the criticism that Mediator gets? And have you used it in the past? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support us, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.